Now, did you see the start of Spring Watch on BBC Two last night? Mesmerising, I can tell you. Well, we've a wildlife mystery of our own you might be able to solve, a mystery that's got the experts baffled. Environment correspondent David Gregory Kumar has the story of an aphid found all over the Midlands that disappears for months at a time, and no one's been able to find out where it goes. Well, David's at Winterbourne Gardens in Birmingham this evening, so tell us more about this aphid, David. OK, Nick, this is an aphid that likes to live on the willow tree. Uh, there's nothing very mysterious about that. Plenty of aphids really enjoy living on just one plant and feeding on that. But what is mysterious about the giant willow aphid, as you said, is it disappears for five, six months of the year and we just have no idea where it goes. The giant willow aphid. It's a bit of a brute. Frankly, it beats up ladybirds and it doesn't bother sucking sap from flimsy willow leaves. It plunges its mouthparts straight into the branches. And it's also a bit of a mystery. A mystery they've been studying at Harper Adams University in Shropshire for quite some time. I call them the shark fins aphid because they've got a, a, a little fin on the oh, back. A tiny little fin, yeah. yeah. Uh, whereas Why the, have they got a tiny little fin? Well, like that? now that's a, that's a question and a half. Uh, we actually don't know, so it's, a, it's an unsolved aphid mystery. But while the fin on its back is puzzling, it's not the main mystery here. You see, at this time of year, the giant willow aphid starts to appear on willow trees. Where it comes from, nobody knows. It then feeds on the willow sap all the way through to November, and then it disappears again. For an insect you could find in your garden, your park, we just don't know that much about it. And it's not for want of trying. You can find it feeding on willow right up to November, and then it disappears. And we don't know where it goes, uh, despite working on it for 15 years and having two PhD students spend three years of their life, dedicate each of them, so that's six PhD student years, and we still don't know where it goes or what the fin's for. <laughs> So could our viewers help with this? Could they try and see where it's going? Yeah. Keep an eye out for, uh, A, if you can find them when they first appear. And then in the autumn, in October, November, perhaps select a tree where you've, you've found them and try and see what's happening. Watch them. Are they, going, are they cl cl climbing down the tree? Are they developing forms with wings? It's not just the fin or their annual holiday and disappearance that makes the life of the giant willow aphid so interesting. So, because these aphids produce an awful lot of sugar, just as a waste byproduct, you'll often find them being farmed by ants, believe it or not. And researchers here discovered that the ants will even pick up and move the aphids to better willow trees, so they produce more sugar, which is better for the aphids and better for the ants. But back to the willow twigs. Keep an eye out for the insect with the shark's fin on its back. Maybe you can solve the question of where they'll disappear to in six months' time. Well, yes, maybe you can help us out. Uh, as uh, Professor Leather said, we'd like you to go out and get to know these aphids on your willow tree. They like willow trees like this. They also like coppiced willow as well. Have a look for that fin on the back, and then uh, as they start to appear at this time of year, get to know them, and then in November, see where they go. Will they head down the trunk towards the roots, or are they developing wings and flying away? Get in touch with us via social media, or email, or my blog at bbc.co.uk slash David Gregory Kumar, and let us know what you'll find. You'll find a post about the aphid there, plus all throughout the week, posts on the rest of our Springwatch films, including a simulated beaver attack on an aspen tree, and looking for polecats in Herefordshire. Tomorrow, Nick, it's bats.